Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about the Sandbox Sand, um, one of my favorite Metaverse cryptos and it is also one of the first ones of uh, generally in the crypto market that are moving up quite strongly. So I think um, the Sandbox I'm really really happy about, generally about how it did um, go. I remember when we came up here and the, when the Metaverse hype happened, um, talked about this here back in November being a bull flag and that further pump could be expected. We then broke out all the way up here. I warned everybody then that this here is getting dangerous. People should think about profit taking. I was told it will never see $5 again. And then we came down pretty much as expected. And then also into this blue target area, um, sitting here between the 0.887 FIB level. And we had here the level defined of 281. So. This is uh, very important. This was above the 200 day moving average. I think that is why this was defined this area like that. And I just had a look back um, because you know, for all channel members, I talk about my own buy orders. And I think also this was really, really positive because we're now here in profit. Um, all three buy orders that were so far triggered. Of course, it depends on for all channel members when you joined, but we had on the 19th of January, one trigger at 422. We had one um, on the 21st trigger at 328 and one here very recently down here that was um, also a few days later at um, 258. So this was very close, yeah, but it did trigger, might not have triggered for everybody unfortunately, but nevertheless, even if it didn't, the other ones, um, the other ones did trigger and with them we are in profit and that is the power of dollar cost averaging in, especially at these prices down here. Um, we need to free ourselves, I think, generally from the assumption that we can get the lowest low. Yeah, many people are chasing the low, but it is often not possible Yeah, to really get the lowest point, to buy at the lowest point. Um, I think here we were lucky, but also the other buy orders that were triggered here in this attractive price area, um, they obviously were triggered. And it's also really nearly impossible to sell at the peak, at the absolute peak. Yeah, you need to be extremely lucky with that, but it doesn't matter. What um, generally there is a saying that there's basically the first 10% of an uptrend are the most costly ones and the last 10% um, here of an uptrend as well. So it's basically the first 10% when you start to go up because this is where with a lot of or high likelihood the reversal could still be happening. And also up here uh, when you try to go uh, or try to sell too um too late basically that you can just miss it right so anyway i think that is why the power of dollar cost averaging in especially in the current price range still i think is fairly attractive i mean remember we come from eight um here something like 881 so really really um interesting uh, price levels here and um so far i think it's looking good generally here for, for um, the sandbox, you know, it has come into the target area. As I indicated in the previous video, um, you know, it has done what it needs to do basically in the correction and it can move up from here. It could have completed its correction. And then because there's always the question about um, Bitcoin, you know what, I still do primarily expect a sell off for Bitcoin below 28.7K. Um, but on the other hand, I say that the sandbox could have seen the low. I think that is possible because what it of course could do, I mean, this, the sandbox here did move up from the low already 85%, right? So if I do expect maybe another sell off for Bitcoin of 50%, um, if we do that from here, it, you know, or something similar, or it even moves up in the next few days and then Bitcoin at some point drops, I mean, from here we still have a buffer and it could, it could drop easily here 40, 45% and still make a potential higher low, yeah? So that is to be kept in mind. This is certainly possible, especially if Bitcoin moves up a little bit more. Sandbox could maybe even here move to the previous wave B top at around um, 680, right? And still could then, uh, when Bitcoin maybe doesn't move up that much in percent, in, uh, in a scenario then where Bitcoin could do that sell off, the Sandbox could just make a higher low, yeah? So that is something to keep in mind. Um, that of course some altcoins could be or all altcoins will be affected, but do they, the ones that have already seen such a significant sell-off, do they really need to come down that far and make a lower low? 
I don't think necessarily, you know, and that's true for Solana as well, which has also triggered the target area. Ethereum, for example, oops, sorry, um, Ethereum, for example. So they don't necessarily need to make a lower low when Bitcoin makes a lower low. Just to emphasize that, especially as they have already seen these target areas here in the correction. Um, so that's the power of dollar cost averaging in. Um, we are not yet at sell order levels where I would personally sell. And the last sell order that was triggered was um, somewhere here in December, I think close here to the top of the wave B. And um, of course, I will make channel members aware as soon as my first sell order has triggered again. Uh, but we're quite um, still a distance away from that. But if it keeps up the pace here, the sandbox, we can get there. So I'm, I'm not overconfident that we're already here back on our way to new all time highs. But it's certainly a possibility. But we need to be prepared for different scenarios, especially at the moment. It's a it's a difficult market environment at the moment. It is a difficult market environment generally for the crypto market. It's not a clear uptrend here for the sandbox yet, in my view. Um, we haven't really overcome the downtrend yet, I would say. You know, I'd like to see a bit more confirmation. More needs to happen for that. And bear in mind, you know, we are still very much, if this is the beginning of an uptrend, we are still far away from the possible top. I mean, we're talking here about levels of at least $13.40 um, or more, possibly even here $16.43, at least somewhere between these two levels, I would expect um, in the next wave up. Um, if this is the next major wave up, which would be a wave three, that we can see these um, levels. So what is interesting, similar to Cardena, actually, um, Sandbox was still above the 200 day moving average and it did remain above the 200 day moving average, which is completely different to Bitcoin. So we need to acknowledge that charts don't always move like Bitcoin, right? Um, it is different. It is different. They move on their own. Yes, of course, the whole crypto market is to a degree affected if Bitcoin moves, but they don't always move the same. As we can see here, Bitcoin is already is still below the 200 day moving average. The sandbox is above the 200 day moving average. And there are countless examples throughout the crypto market. Um, Sandbox is currently fighting here with a 50 day moving average sitting at 470. So I think if that level is broken, we could get all the way up to $5.23. That would be the top of that here, small wave four here, that previous wave four, um, before we then could see a 550 level, yeah? Um, there is still the possibility that the final, that there will be here a final um, move down, that here this here was only a wave three, yeah, and that we might see the wave four here. That is certainly possible and would not be invalidated until we move actually above something around 550. Yeah, you, you want to move above that previous wave one here. Um, and if you do that, then it basically invalidates that pattern. However, that wave four would move up quite a lot, a bit too much for my, um, in my opinion. So I'm not sure if that is still a wave, um, a wave four, but it's, it is a possibility that we still need to have on the radar. Um, however, this here, how it is like that, it looks actually pretty good. And then you would have had finished your wave C here and you're already then back in a wave one, two, or maybe this was the one, two, you have the three, four, and then you five, and then you get an ABC that could push you down again. Um, and there is quite a bit, if this is the case here yeah, that we already hear an uptrend, then this um, could push you down again. There will be another dip. And if we then make a higher low, I think I'm gonna enter again um, and add to my positions. And I'll do that for Bitcoin as well. If I see a higher low, then I'm really, really considering to enter. Um, there should be there should be another correction coming soon. Yeah. Um, and if, as I said, if this is a beginning uptrend, then in a then this would here be a wave one, a larger wave one that consists of five waves in itself before you come down in a wave two. And as we've seen here, this larger wave two here has also come down to these FIP levels, the lower FIP levels. So again, we can consider here in another move down, maybe the 0.618 FIP level at 345 as support um, or even lower in my opinion, probably more around the $3 mark. $3.06 to 0.786 FIP level. At the moment, everybody's getting super bullish again, but I think we are now again at this stage where we can expect a correction. Um, will it be the will it be that final wave five sell off or will it only be one that maybe is a 60, 70% sell off? Um, 
from that wave here, yeah, where you then come down to 353 or something, that we have to see. Um, it certainly is a realistic possibility that the sandbox has seen the low, and therefore my strategy of dollar cost averaging in at these price levels, yeah, and even the current level is in my view still very attractive, even though the sandbox has moved up quite a bit. So on the daily, we can see that we are still, um, we still have some scope to move higher here, but um, we are now at the 61, 62 level of the RSI on the daily. So um, there is more potential to move higher. I mean, the sandbox moved already up to 88 before, yeah, uh, but that was the super hype here. Not sure if that's, if it's going to do that, especially if it's only a wave one here, um, where people are still a bit unsure, is this really an uptrend or not? There, you don't necessarily need to push that high. Um, the MACD has seen a buy signal down here where we crossed the zero line. And as always, you know, the MACD oftentimes is a very reliable indicator. And as you can see, when that happened, we saw actually rising prices. I think the last TA video, we talked about that. Um, and at the moment, yeah, we need to see because on the shorter time frames, for example, here on the four hour chart, we're currently retracing because also here you were overbought, but also here we are probably gonna get another bullish crossover. So the chances are actually quite good that we can move up higher from here. Um, but personally, I would now to enter um, again, I would wait for another dip personally, you know, um, but even the current price levels are fairly attractive. And it always, again, depends on you if you wanna get in now or not. I can't give you financial advice, but what I think is that there will be another dip, maybe like that one that we saw here already, but that was nothing significant. You would, if you complete five waves here to the upside, you will see a more significant dip um, before you then move higher. So there will be another chance in my view to get in there. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty much a, a very, very uh, yeah success story here on this channel, this crypto, because so far it's all worked out pretty much according to plan. Also, what basically supports the view that we could have seen the low already for the sandbox as well is again similar to bitcoin we have seen here we are just breaking the donchian channel here to the upside the rule is typically that when you see the donchian channel broken twice to the upside that this is a good sign that it is going to continue and we have seen it here once and the second time here that was today it was not a strong uh, move up but it did break it for a second time and uh, that would normally be um, a buy signal as well. So that is something to bear in mind. Um, as you can see here, whenever the Donchin channel is broken twice, um, you can some you can oftentimes expect here quite a bit of a move up. Um, it doesn't always work, of course, um, but it can confirm an uptrend. It's an additional indicator. What makes me a bit skeptical here at the moment that the second break was not that strong. Yeah, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, but again, it depends also on which time frame you're using at. That again depends on you. On the eight hour chart, for example, we did see um, again throughout this whole downtrend, no break to the upside really. Um, and only now it has happened, right? So a good sign that the reversal could already be in. Would be very interesting. And um, I'm very happy about it because we talked about the sandbox a lot on this channel. And we also talked about it in my top 10 cryptos for 2022 video. And I did mention before that the sandbox, um, generally metaverse cryptos, but especially the sandbox as being a ecosystem pretty much, has a good potential to outperform Bitcoin in a next run up. And we can currently see that. Um, yeah, that's my view on the sandbox. Hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please smash the like button and subscribe. And if you really like the content, maybe consider to join as a channel member. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.